Author Kim Twee was just 10 years old when she and her family, along with thousands of others, left Vietnam on a boat, ending up in a refugee camp in Malaysia before making her way to Canada. That experience inspired her first novel, Rue, and it's woven into her new novel as well. V is named after its protagonist, the youngest of four children escaping the Vietnam War and making a new life for herself. And author Kim, Kim Thuy is joining us in studio this morning. Good to have you with us. Thank you. All right, people remember your first book. Uh, it, it, your real life informs some of that story, similar to uh, V as well. But you've talked about the difference between writing immigrant literature and refugee literature. What's the difference for you? Well, a refugee is someone who doesn't have a home yet. You know, when we were in the refugee camp, and a refugee is someone who had been ejected from uh, his or her past and not projected in the future yet. And the present is completely empty of, of meanings and of time because you're outside of the timeline. You don't know when you're gonna eat, you don't know when you're gonna leave, you don't even know if you're gonna get to leave the camp. And then also in that space is a no man's land. Mm -hmm. You don't, you, the first piece of paper that we got when we got selected from Canada under citizenship, uh, we were uh, nationless, that's how you say yes. it, yeah? So basically in that camp, you were no longer anything. You know, you're not part of you a can't territory. Set up roots, you can't have a home. Nothing. And it, you could be there yeah. for years, and, and then, many families are. Uh -huh. Whereas an immigrant, and, and if you look up in the, the, uh, in the French version anyway, mm -hmm. it's under immeuble, which means that you, can, you finally find something permanent. Mm -hmm. you, it, it, you can start build, building. And uh, yeah, so I, I talk a lot about of that transition because you, so suddenly, you know, you're being reborn again, or mm. you find a new country. A new uh, country and a new life. I, I want to talk about the refugee camps for just a moment because it's a fascinating part of the book. And there's a scene where a woman survives a dangerous boat trip only to die in the refugee camp when a coconut falls on her head. And this is a true story. It is. This is a true story because for a TV show, uh, the, they, they have found, again, the man who selected us in the refugee camp. Wow. And then, could you believe that? And now he lives 10 minutes from our house. That's incredible. You know, because of the TV show, we got to thank him. And, uh, and there were three Canadians on that delegation. And yeah, we never thought that we would find him again. Of course. Yeah, and he told us the, um, the, the story of this coconut for this woman to have survived rape, pirates, you know, stealing and all of that. Um, and well, dangers uh, at sea. She arrived, she got accepted, and then a coconut fell on her head. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that was exceptional, but I started making research, mm -hmm. and I saw that many Vietnamese, they would make a list of dangers in the camp, yeah. and the first one is to never get to leave the camp, and the second one is to have a coconut falling on your head. Unbelievable. Yeah, but when you go on... Uh, on uh, uh, on vacation, yeah. uh, we never think well, we see coconut trees, but we never worry think of about that is something fatal. Yeah, could come of it. But, but every morning, there's somebody who would take off all the ripe coconuts. Sure, right? in the camp, nobody does that for you. So, so then you they're just... fine. <laughs> uh, you know, your book touched a nerve with a lot of people, especially in this country. I imagine this will do the same. What have you learned about other people's experiences through your writing? That we are so strong. As humans, you know, uh, facing adversity, we become superheroes, superhumans. You know, to 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 not eat, to not drink, to walk, to cross uh, borders, to jump off walls, and and so I have such admiration. More, you know, the more I read about us as humankind, not not uh, because very rarely do we talk about. And maybe because immigrants, we don't we don't have a voice most of the time, so you rarely hear stories and and, and ordinary stories. You know, people just facing adversity and taking up uh, challenges and survive. You know, sometimes people can look at uh, people trying to come into our country as you know the people who would potentially be a burden or having to make room for. But when you view them in the light that you write about them and people of strength and what they bring to the fabric of Canada, it's very inspiring. Yeah, I, I think even just for genetic, you know? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for our genes, I think it's, it's worth it. Because anybody who ca who have crossed all these or, or who has lived all these challenges, they not only 
are physically stronger, mm -hmm. but They're psychologically. Yeah. I was born so weak with all kinds of allergies, you know, fish, seafood, milk, eggs, and all of that. And after the boat trip, I've lost them all. Wow. Now I'm unkillable. <laughs> I don't know how you can. <laughs> I don't know how you can take me down. Yeah, I've lost them all. What do you love most? I know you were passionate about your works, but what do you love about this story? What do you want people to take away? Oh, again, you know, to humanize basically the word refugees or immigrants, mm -hmm. because very often it's a generic word. Yes. And, and I think in order for us to get attached or to understand, uh, we need a face, we need a name, we need a story. And each of them has a story. And each of us actually, you know, every life is so precious and so interesting. So that's, that's I'm in love with us. You know, <laughs> with all humans, like in the plane, just this woman. And then I discovered that she's a pilot. Yes. And because of the storm, you know, it took three, four hours I, yes. to get off. And so she explained to me all the buttons in the cockpit. I feel like you draw stories out of people. And some of them we will find in V. Kim Tui, good to have you in studio this Thank morning. Thank you so much.